Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. And yes, you read that correctly, we are reviewing Jurassic World. But you might be wondering, how the hell can we do that if it's still in theaters? Well, this ought to explain it. Oh, hello. I bet you're wondering why we're reviewing this movie now instead of waiting for it to come to DVD. Well, the answer is quite simple. You see, Hollywood now sees us as a threat taking down several of our videos on YouTube because they forgot reviews are part of fair use. Some of these videos have been put back, but others are just seen as too dangerous for your fragile minds to handle. Thus, every single time we've done a Jurassic Park movie, even if we end up praising it, Hollywood has always taken it down. But Mr. Glasses, I have a question! Why, if it isn't my good friend Mr. Puppy the Puppy, what's on your mind, Mr. Puppy? Hasn't Hollywood realized that by doing this they look incredibly desperate and unprofessional? I mean, even your reviews of BAD movies have led to higher sales due to your exposure! Oh, Mr. Puppy, Hollywood has more important things to worry about than that! Well, what's more important than freedom of speech being threatened by insecure goons? Complaining how their freedom of speech is being threatened by a bunch of insecure goons! You're kidding, right? But as we said before, the review must go on. I mean... Do they know the meaning of irony? So rather than do a review just to have it taken down anyway... They do remember Sopa Napster, right? We're going to reenact scenes from the movie to give you a better idea of what we're talking about. But Mr. Glasses, the clips allow people to judge the film for themselves. Won't your reenactments leave an emotional, even bitter mark on the material being reviewed? None! None whatsoever! Gee, I guess the only thing we can do now is wait for Hollywood to finally grow up. I'm not holding my breath, so enjoy our incredibly unbiased review of Jurassic World. You know, your accent sounds a lot like Carrie Elway's with a dump truck shoved up his nose. Enjoy! You heard the man. Reviewing the Jurassic Park movies has been a big tradition around here, and we're not going to let Hollywood stop it. So, rather than wait for it to come out on DVD, we're just going to jump right into it. This is our take on Jurassic World. The movie opens up with our main star of the film. Not Chris Pratt as Owen, not Bryce Dallas Howard as Claire, not even really the dinosaurs. No, the star of the movie is the park. The amount of detail they put into this place is incredible. We finally see it open. It's like Disney World, only less people probably die. It's phenomenal. So, I know what you're thinking. If the park looks this good so many years after the original, imagine what the goddamn dinosaurs must look like. It's been 22 years since the first film's groundbreaking effects, so how the hell are they gonna look now? They suck. Like, wow do they suck! It's some of the worst CG the movies have ever cranked out. They look like cardboard cutouts. No, wait, even that would have some three-dimensional qualities to them. They look like mist, like a cloud of fog in the shape of a dinosaur. There's a scene where a kid is looking at dinosaurs through a viewfinder, which, by the way, you're 13. What the fuck are you doing looking through a viewfinder? And even they look more three-dimensional than the ones in the movie. And you wanna know why? Because it was really there. It was really fucking there. I mean, okay, they're little models and they don't look very convincing, but I feel like I can touch them. I don't feel like I can touch any of these dinosaurs. I, I don't want to touch dinosaurs, but nevertheless, oh shut up! I want to be able to feel like I can pet a dinosaur. That's the wonder of Jurassic Park! And here's the thing, I'm actually not anti-CGI. I mean, Ex Machina, she looked like a real robot. Madagascar totally made me believe that David Schwimmer could act. But with the other Jurassic Park movies, they use animatronics and CGI. This fools the eye. It makes it more of a grand illusion. We've gotten too used to CGI. So when we see it, we know it's CGI and we know it's not there. But here's the other weird thing. They said they use animatronics in this movie. But outside of a scene where Littlefoot's mother dies, they all look so flat and unconvincing. How can this be if they used animatronics? In my opinion, they CG'd over the animatronics. They look at the animatronics of, say, the raptors in the muzzle cages and say, you know what, I want the eyes to blink a little different or the mouth to move a little more. Let's paint CG all over that shit and now there's a veil of fake all over what used to be believable. But I know what you're thinking. Who cares? I mean, really, in the grand scheme of things, who cares? We want to see cool dinosaurs do cool dinosaur things. Even if they look kind of fake, we want them to do cool things, right? Well, I'm gonna take that argument and uh, store it away here for later, because trust me, that'll come back in in a bit of time. But let's actually get to the story. Now that the park has been open for a while, people, it seems, have gotten too used to dinosaurs. 
Oh my god, this black chick who's a white chick is a white chick. I found somebody rude on the internet! Oh my god! No! That's right, they've actually gotten bored with them. The CEO of the park named Simon and the manager of the park named Claire tried to figure out how to fix this. We need to up the sales. I need you to make me a dinosaur so badass that if it escaped, we couldn't possibly stop it. Okay, now we're talking. We've seen raptors and stegosauruses before. This is creating a brand new dinosaur specifically to look awesome. They don't have to follow any rules. It's not like they did before anyway. I mean, the Dilophosaurus, yeah, you nailed that. But they're using science to create whatever the hell they want. By God, imagine what you could do with this. The body of a T-Rex, the wings of a pterodactyl, the neck of a brontosaurus, the head of a triceratops, lions for hands! And hey, just to sell more tickets, give it bazooka boobs. Come on, we're clearly in bullshit science here. We can do whatever we want. Okay, I know they're not gonna make something quite like that, but it's gonna look amazing. And they've been building it up in this movie for quite a bit. So, after tricking the security guard like an 80s prison movie, no really, he's got the sandwich and everything. What does this monstrous, terrifying, abomination of science look like? A big raptor. I'm a new dinosaur. Yep, it's about as unimpressive as you can imagine. You know that Photoshop tool you can use to make things bigger? That's pretty much all they used, except they gave him a few more bumps on the back and made him a little paler. Ooh! Even the made-up name is a bore. We're calling him Indominus Rex because it's easier to pronounce. You know what's even easier to pronounce? Coke 2. And that's what I'm calling him. I'm calling him the Coke 2 Asaurus. Hey, they openly admit it's trying to be something bigger and badder than the T-Rex, but it looks so boring and fake, it can't measure up. But actually, to Coke 2's credit, it can do some cool things, like camouflage, lower its body heat, which, of course, the scientists have no fucking idea about. Oh my god, we've watched him from birth, kept him in captivity, and know everything there is to know about him. How can we possibly know everything there is to know about him? This is where the two kids come in, because by shit, we always need fucking kids in these movies. But to their credit, they're not that bad. It's more the idiot adults that surround them. You see, their parents are getting a divorce. Oh, yeah, sorry. So they're spending the weekend with their Aunt Claire, who's obviously a little busy herself. Hi Claire, I just wanted to make sure the boys are okay. Oh, well actually they're not around me right now, so... <laughs> Whoa, Jesus. I just thought you'd bond with my boys! Listen sis, I'm trying to make sure that the park doesn't eat itself. It's just really hard with my divorce hearings right now. You're calling me during your divorce hearing? Actually, they're telling me to hurry up right now. Yeah, don't call me when you're busy with that. That's a touch more important. Not as important as my want for you to like kids. <laughs> oh no, a T-Rex ate a baby, gotta go. Of course, the kids aren't all right because they're written like little dumbasses that go off into restricted areas in their American gladiator ball that for some reason has no track. Okay, taking out the obvious safety of the two people inside, especially two children without an adult in a ball without a track, how is this safe for the dinosaurs? I mean, you see people in go-karts, imagine throwing animals in that! Oh, hit it again! <laughs> hit it one more time! But Coke 2 grabs him, and again, because you never believe anything is there, it's not the least bit frightening, yet the boys end up escaping. So Claire tells Owen, the raptor trainer, about her missing kids in Coke 2. Oh, after they share some amazing on-screen chemistry. We did it once, remember? Sure do. And that's it! That was the on-screen chemistry! On the one hand, I'm happy they didn't argue like those dysfunctional pussies in Twister, but on the other hand, why have them interested in each other at all? I mean, I'm not gonna act like the chemistry in the first film was that great, but they at least talked and hugged and smiled and shit like that. Here, they barely even look at each other. They share one kiss in the middle of the film, but then go back to acting like they're not a couple again. It's entirely pointless. I mean, fucking bizarre concept, but if you have a dude and a chick in a movie, they don't always have to hook up. I mean, if you got a romance, great, but it's not like a checklist. In Aliens, Ripley doesn't need to turn to Bishop and be like, I love you. It'd be totally out of nowhere and just wouldn't fit. And I know what you're thinking, that's as crazy as the park CEO flying a helicopter into certain death. You probably weren't thinking that by any of the segue. The owner decides he wants to help stop Coke 2 by flying a helicopter to shoot at it. They even play this triumphant music like, yay, he's doing the smart thing. But despite everybody telling him he's gonna end up dying, he eventually ends up dying. Oh no! Yeah, for a businessman, that was a pretty dumb move on his part.
This leads to a bunch of pterodactyls being released and... Okay, remember that argument I was talking about before about having the dinosaurs only do cool stuff? Well, here, let's bring that argument back in. This is the cool stuff I'm talking about. The pterodactyls are attacking people. Why is this awesome? Because it's taking it to the next level. We've seen dinosaurs eat scientists and people with guns in the jungle and we're sick to death of it. Here, even though it's obviously fake, it still looks really cool. They do some legitimately creative awesome stuff. They pick up civilians, fight over them, drop them into the water, only to have other dinosaurs eat them there. It's fucking fantastic! Even Claire machine guns down one of them, saving Owen's life! But of course, the little kids are like, We want to go with you. Wow, thanks, that's really great to hear. Well, I mean him. Fuck you, you little shits! If I saw my aunt machine gun down a pterodactyl, you bet I'd hide behind her skirted ass! So okay, all the people in the park are in one location, an all-you-can-eat dino buffet just waiting to be ripped to shreds. The opportunities write themselves. What terrifyingly awesome thing- <laughs> Nothing! We never see those people again! They, they just stay in this one giant spot, this fucking salad bar of deliciousness, and we never ever touch them again! What do they do next? Well, something completely different, really new, you've never seen this in Jurassic Park movie! They go hunting dinosaurs in the jungle! Right? Right? Pushing the fucking envelope here! Because hey, remember, there's an evil scientific hybrid that needs to be stopped. Oh, I'm not talking about the dinosaur, I'm talking about Vincent D'Onofrio being successfully combined with John Malkovich and every early 90s villain ever. I want to weaponize these raptors because I'm the obvious bad guy. I adjust my belt buckle all the time. No, no, we don't care, we don't care. We just had a scene where pterodactyls played hot potato with people's heads. Why would we care? We know he's the bad guy, we know he's going to die, we know that man sucks! So can we stop repeating what we've seen a fuck ton of times in the other films? Can we please get some new developments? Oh, wait, what am I talking about? One of the biggest developments in the film is coming up! And I mean, this is like a huge twist they've been building up. They use the raptors to find Coke 2 and somehow think these tiny things are gonna take it down. When they finally put two and two together. And remember, this is a big shock. My God, that dinosaur that looks like a raptor, acts like a raptor, sounds like a raptor, and moves like a raptor. I think it's part raptor! No, 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 no! The ones you just add water to make them grow bigger? Well, don't show that to anybody here! It'll completely blow their minds! They'll be like, what's that? Oh, that's a triceratops. Come on, everybody knows that. Oh, you're gonna add water? Well, I don't know what that's gonna do. Oh my god, what is that? What is that? Oh my god, it changed into something completely unrecognizable! I mean, I'm amazing at what I do, but this? This is beyond my comprehension! Oh my god, what is that? So, big shock, a raptor attacks D'Onofrio off screen where he's PG-13 to death, leaving only our main stars left. Well, them and thousands of other people next door, but pfft, that'd be no fun involving them. But suddenly, Claire goes to this giant door and says, Unfunny computer comic relief, open up the door. You're insane, you're insane! Just do it! Suddenly, the door starts to open up. There's nothing but darkness facing her. <gasps> Holy shit, could it be? She stares into the black unknown while lighting up a flare. Holy fucking god! Is it? Is it? I'm a motherfucking T-Rex! I'm a motherfucking T-Rex! It's the motherfucking T-Rex! Claire throws the flare towards Coke 2, and original Coke is like, Fuck you, bitch! I'm the motherfucking T-Rex! I'm a motherfucking T-Rex! So there they are. Raptors, giant Coke 2 Raptor, and the motherfucking T-Rex, all in a kick-ass, incredible showdown! <laughs> Hang on, if we're gonna do this, we gotta do this right. Oh, uh, hello. John Bailey, I know you're used to doing the honest trailer voice on your own reviews on your own channel, Plug, but I need your help! 
Uh, with what exactly? I need a voice as epic as yours to narrate the climax of Jurassic World. The motherfucking T-Rex scene? Mm-hmm. Done. The T-Rex takes a bite out of the Pussysaurus, but then Pussysaurus bites back. The T-Rex slams that bitch into a building, but then the bitch trips her to the ground. T-Rex then starts taking several bites to the neck. Get up, you bum! Suddenly, one of the raptors jumps on top, freeing the T-Rex. She knocks the head back, slamming Pussysaurus into one of the overly priced restaurants. The T-Rex then says, You cannot defeat such awesomeness. Wait, wait, wait. The T-Rex is female, isn't she? Well, she's a female who happens to sound like Optimus Prime. Yeah, okay. You cannot defeat such awesomeness. My amazing kickassery cannot be contained. Her opponent roared, then the motherfucking T-Rex roared, then a mechanical T-Rex came in and burned them alive. Okay, I know that didn't happen in the movie. Who's got the cool voice? Okay, sorry. But they survive the blast and blow him up with their own fire breath. T-Rex then gives her opponent one more chance. Surrender or face the age of extinction. No response. Thus the motherfucking T-Rex replied, Then go fish. Suddenly that cool Jaws dinosaur you saw earlier comes up and eats the living hell out of that piece of shit. The battle is over. T-Rex and Raptor, two sworn enemies, acknowledge that their honor has been satisfied and live to fight another day. Oh, and some stuff with human characters happens. But who cares? The T-Rex climbs to the tallest building on the tallest mountain overlooking the park, lets out one more triumphant roar, turns to the camera and says, I am a motherfucking T-Rex. Yeah, remember when the T-Rex dies to the Who Cares Asaurus just so they can sell more toys? Well, this scene takes all the fucking idiots who thought this was a good idea, grabs them by the ear and says, Come here! Come here! No! No! That is not how you do a T-Rex fight movie! That is not how you do a T-Rex fight! This is how you do a T-Rex fight, you bad idiots! Those are bad, bad idiots! God! <sighs> Damn it, movies! I was just about done with you! I swear, it was over! I was just about to head out the door and be like... I'm sorry, Jurassic Park sequels. This abuse can go on no longer. You promised so many wonderful things for us and instead you hurt me! You hurt me time and again! Well, no more. Goodbye, Jurassic Park sequels. But what if I made the greatest T-Rex fight ever? I'd say I'm falling for your bullshit all over again. Love me, Jurassic Park sequels! Yes. It's like Frost Nixon. The majority of the interviews aren't very good, but the last few minutes practically makes up for all of it. I guess really the film's not the worst. I mean, it is well acted, looks nice, and does have some remarkable scenes. I just wish I didn't have to sit through so much boring stuff to get to those scenes. If you want to do a suspense film, great. Make the effects better and give us more scary scenarios. If you want to do a B film, great. Go all out. Make some totally insane choices. Make the whole film as good as that last 10 minutes. But this half and half thing? Ugh, why can't I quit you, Jurassic Park sequels? I guess as the films go, it is the second best out of all of them, but given the other two, that's not a phenomenal feat. A lot of choices they make do still piss me off, but I'm not gonna be shocked if other people like it. For a lot of people, it's stupid in all the right ways. For me, I didn't think it went far enough. Except for that ending, which, like I said, is totally worth the price of admission. Yeah, I realize this review is all over the place, should you see it, should you not see it, but hopefully you can gauge some idea if this is the right movie for you. So, is that it then? Yeah, pretty much. There's nothing else to reenact. Though the studio that owns this does also own Fifty Shades of Grey, and it's unlikely they'll let me use the clips for that. Okay, no. Oh. Oh. My inner goddess is about to explode. I'm a motherfucking T-Rex!
Be sure to subscribe to this crazy guy for his movie reviews and check mine out on my channel because I said so in my cool voice. A predator apex will show your respect cause I'm a grimlock bigger than Metroplex. Not Jonah Hex or Professor X or even Luthor comma Lex. I'm a motherfucking T-Rex. <laughs> I'm a motherfucking T-Rex. I think it's part raptor!